welcome to another webisode of Chick Belt. Today we are going to make some sawdust by cutting out our walls for our teardrop. Um, for those of you that are starting with a pattern such as this, we decided to make a pattern because we wanted to morph a couple trailer designs into this particular build. Um, we like the shape of the kit but it just is a little bit too straight in the front. And so on the front of this trailer, you'll notice we've got a little bit more of a curve, comes down, which also utilizes the maximum space for our bed. Again, we didn't quite like the kit and the fact that the counters set back a ways because of the sharp drop um, in the galley area in the rear end of the teardrop. Your counters quite a ways from you. And so by bringing in the, the curve out a little bit more, such as a Ken skill, you're able to extend your counter out a, a, almost three whole inches. Um, if this was a kit, this would be coming down a lot sharper here, and my counter would be way back here. So we just kind of made our own design with this. Um, also, we modified the door. You'll see in this black outline, this is a typical um, teardrop door, such as on the kit here. I wanted a, a um, oval door top, I don't know what you call it, um, with a, a porthole type window in it. Oh, I hear the key. Uh, <laughs> so, um, we drew this out and placement. So, um, let me roll up this pattern and we'll discuss plywood and I'll be right back. All right. Okay, so here we are. I've got it all... Um, traced out with a pen. Oh, there's our kitties. Um, let's talk about plywood for a minute. This is not marine plywood. This is going to be living in Southern California. Um, I'm also going to be putting um, a sheathing on the outside of it. So this is just ACX um, exterior basic plywood. Um, what I, I want my insides the nicest because again I'm going to be covering this exterior side with um, a sheeting. So I've got my A sides of each piece of plywood, 5 8 inch, together. Um, that way the, my inside walls, which I'm just going to paint, I want them to look really nice and it has the nicer grade of plywood. Um, you'll notice in this I've got a piece of Luan type um, wall board. Uh, that's simply in there. I got it screwed in between the two pieces of plywood um, because I want to cut it out at the same time so that I have a pattern in case I ever want to use this particular um, profile again. Um, I can't think of anything else. So I'm going to turn on the jigsaw, get a jigsaw. They're fairly inexpensive. If you don't think you'll ever be doing something like this again, find a friend to borrow one from. Go buy a brand new blade, they're five or six bucks, you know, um, and borrow one from somebody. Um, but if you are going to purchase one and you think you'll be doing more projects, get the best you can get for what you can afford. Um, but you can pick them up at any Home Depot, Lowe's, your local hardware store, or even, I'm sure, places like Harbor Freight and Tool Warehouses have them. So, um, don't forget to wear your safety glasses and these nifty little ear deals if your hearing is sensitive. And I'm going to get started here in just a minute. Hey, it's Kay. I'm back and I'm ready to start sawing. One thing I wanted to point out, when you um, trace out your pattern, when you go to cut, I like to cut on the outside of my line. 
That gives me a little bit of wiggle room if I start to see my blade is moving in. Um, I've got a little bit more time to correct myself before I start digging into, you know, my end profile. And it's really simple once you're done cutting to just sand that. You just use a little sand block thingy and sand it down nice and perfect to the inside of your line. All right, so I'm about ready to get started. Now that I've got to this point, I've shifted um, the whole thing up onto the table. The, you know, the table underneath the square comes back right here. I want to support this piece that I've just cut um, so that it's not hanging. So, here we go. Back at it. Okay, so we've shifted this again. I've cut around about to here. So now I've moved my pieces of plywood up so that this is supported by the table below so the whole thing doesn't come crashing down here in a minute. So we're almost done. Then we'll tackle the door. Okay, so we got the whole outer um, edge of our profile cut out. Now I want to cut out my galley lid hinge beam notch. Um, I'm building this the Grant Little Bear way. Um, and what he likes to use is this um, galley lid hinge beam, which your um, Better Than a Hurricane hinge will screw to um, for your galley lid and if you make a notch in your profile oops I got this backwards this way it just sits right down in there and it's locked in on both sides it's it, you know it goes down in the 5 8 inch so you're able to screw it in but now you've got this rock solid piece for your galley lid to that because it's going to be hanging off there. Another thing you're going to notice right here is we've moved the galley lid up about six inches. Um, I wanted a little bit more cabinet space in the galley. And so in order to acquire that extra space, we just had to bring up... Um, where the galley lid would be. If you'll notice over here, so instead of an opening right here, like in this kit, it's, it's going to be up here a little bit farther. Um, no big deal, but I'm going to cut this notch out. Now this notch, very important again, um, cut on the inside. You can sand down to get the perfect fit because you want this to fit tight. So I'm going to get that cut out here now. Okay, so let's see how it fits. Perfect. See how that's going to work? It's going to fit right in there. Perfect. I love it. Okay, it's a good thing. I just wanted to mention that I cut on the outside because right here, right here, I started sway as I'm making the curve, started swaying in. I I'm, I'm at the inside of the line. So, that's a good thing for that. Okay, now we're going to cut out our door. I'm going to do it the way I want to do it versus the little bear way. Um, I'm not really comfortable with a circular saw, you know, um, to 
drop the blade and go, I am more of a jigsaw girl. So I'm going to do it the old school, drill a hole where you want to start and where you want to end and cut it up. So let me grab my drill and we'll get started on the door. Okay, so we're ready to cut out the door. Um, what I've already done is I've already drilled some pilot holes um, so where I can get my jigsaw in and start cutting. I've also put up a little jig, made a jig up for a rail, measured from my blade to the outside of the foot deal here, and I have about one and three eighths inches um, from this point to this point. So that's where I positioned my little board and then I can just run the edge of my jigsaw along this board and get a nice straight cut. Um, you're going to be cutting two here. When you do your door and you're going to build your own door and you need both pieces of wood, um, you want to cut out your door piece first, which is the inside line of the two lines. So I'm going to be coming in here I'm cutting super close to this line, um, staying to the outside of it, of course, so I can, you know, sand down. But it's way more important on your door than the framing piece on the outside. That we're going to be adding um, trims and rubber for seal and a, a host of things that can build that back up and um, take up the space. Another thing you'll notice here is my gap is much bigger on this side than this. Um, that is because my door will be opening this way and I'll be using the Little Bear um, offset hinge on this door and it needs a 3 8 inch um, gap for that hinge to work. So I'm ready to get started and get this door cut out. See, now I can comfortably just rest this up against this, keeping an eye, of course, but it's going to make for a much easier sailor. Okay, so now I'm going to measure out and set my rail up on this side as well because I was very happy with what a straight cut I got on that side. So, let me get that set up, and we'll be right back. All right, so I got the rail set up, measured out, and I'm ready to finish off cutting out my door. I'm so excited. Betty, here it comes. Okay, uh, so we got her done. There's our doors. They're going to have a little porthole in them, and they're going to be so cute. All right, I'm going to set these down for the moment because we still need to come in and clean up the edge for the frame of the door. We're going to cut in a little bit closer. Again, I'll be using the rails. Those work fabulously. I cannot recommend these enough. Find you a square straight board and use a ruler, a, a yardstick would probably work just as well. Just as long as you can clamp it down hard enough so that it won't shift as you go. So, I'm going to set up some new rails and clean this edge up and we'll be done with that and I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're all done cutting it out. Now, the next step we're going to do to, uh, first I want to say, don't get in a hurry to take your two pieces apart. Leave them screwed together because we're going to sand the edges now. We're going to get down to the true line, but most importantly, we're going to make sure everything is square. Um, you want to make sure you leave them together, especially when you're sanding down for where your galley lid is going to be. You want both sides to be a mirror image of each other. So when that lid comes down, it sits the same on both sides perfectly. Um, same with your door. Don't get in a hurry to unscrew your door cut out apart. Again, you want to sand it so that when you go to build your doors and build your trailer, 
you're going to be able to build both sides exactly the same. They're going to fit perfect. So, um, I guess we'll get started with Sandy. Here we go. Okay, so this is partly where I want to show you about when you sand to make sure that um, your trailer is going to be square. You can use a little, any square like this one right here that I prefer. And I just stick it up here and I'm looking for um, air. I'm looking for light to see where I need to sand down to my true line. And you can see right here, I'm pretty good. But it's move along here a little bit, and see if I can see if you can see that here. We're starting to see we're not square, which we can totally see that here by our line. I cut really big there, so we're gonna sand that down. And here's another real useful tool in using when you're sanding. It's a flexible metal yardstick. It's, I don't know what it's made out of. It's not aluminum because it's thicker than that, but it's a yardstick. And so if you put this up on your trailer and, you know, bend it down, you're going to see where you're high and low. And this comes in really handy. See, look at that there. You might need help holding clamp it down because you are covering a lot of space. But this is going to give you a real smooth profile. Now remember, if it's not perfect, don't sweat it. You're going to be adding moldings and all kinds of trim and you'll be able to hide some errors. But um, just so that you know what you're doing, how's it looking? Just use something like this that's flexible, and uh, it's a really handy tool. So it's really important when you're using your your sander to be getting right in the middle so you're getting both pieces at the same time. You want it to be nice and flat on the surface. Don't be rocking it this way because then you're going to put a weird round edge on it. And keep your square right with you as you go, so you can check on things. So, um, we're just going to get this done, get this all squared up. Again, with the door, we'll be doing the same thing. We'll take our square in here. And that needs a little bit of work here and there. The parts are really good. That's a, an in inherent problem with using a jigsaw. Um, the blade can move slightly on one edge or another, but, um, you know, it's what I'd prefer to do. I'd rather cut big and sand down to what I need than have this skill saw going 9,000 miles an hour and and we're done. So, um, I'm going to get this all sanded out, my door as well. I will do the same thing with the door. I will take my square and see where I am. I cut big up here, so I know that needs some work up there. And um, once I'm all done with that and I'm satisfied with it, um, we'll start to build some cabinets because that's the next step in our process. So, thanks for watching. My name is Kay at Chick Bill. You can find us on Facebook. Um, or we'll have a little more discussion if you have any questions or anything. But um, we're moving right along. And I'm really excited to see everybody else's builds. And we'll see you real soon.